guys kind of things. Um, we're doing a review here, we're at home here this morning, so don't be surprised. I have four dogs, and any of them could come into shot at any point in time, ranging from one that's kind of donkey sized down to a little small dog. What we're doing today, we're showing you a knife I received yesterday. Um, it's the Gossman Polaris and Hey Troy. So I received this yesterday and I bought it on the second hand market. They're very difficult to come across these. Scott Gosman is the maker in uh, America and he just can't make enough of these or quick enough. But um, it's a design, anyone that follows me, it's a design very, very similar to a lot of the knives that I use in favour. So I just want to show you what it looks like compared to some of my absolute favourite knives of all time. So, this here, if you don't know anything about the LT Wright Genesis and you don't follow Eagle Ridge, this is actually the knife that, uh, it, it's actually on the design and logo of, of Eagle Ridge Survival. And it's a, I wouldn't say Kephart style, more of a spear point style. I, I always consider a Kephart as, as more rounded, so this, but it's a spear point. You can see there's similarities there. And then my own design, is the Eagle Ridge Survival Talon knife. And you can see there is definitely a similarity between the three of them. So it's it's for no wonder that I like this straight off the bat. Um, so I can safely say, even though I bought it second hand, you can tell by the handle, it, it's this has never been used. And I know for a fact, until yesterday, it had never struck a ferro rod or anything like that. Um, I would say in the 18 hours that I've had it, I've probably given it more use than it's had in the rest of its existence. We'll be doing a, a video on this one too, because this is a pretty cool knife. I'm not just saying that because I designed it, it really is a pretty cool knife too. So, we're going to do a little bit of bathroom with this. Put my coffee to the side. And unusual, I don't usually go for stainless steel type knives, but um, this is all I could get this in. I, you know, it's AEBL. I've never used this steel, um, and if I if I'd had the choice, it would be in 3B. I, I really like that steel. So anyhow, I'll do a little bit of battening with it. Um, what I always find now. I've never had a Gosman knife before, but my understanding on these knives, and definitely, you, you just know when you, you hold a knife. And I knew when I took this out of the box, I, you know, I'm going to get on very, very well with this. And uh, it, it was designed by a friend of ours too, Kevin. But sometimes you, it takes me six months to decide whether I like a knife or not, usually. But there's a caveat there, and the exception of that is this is so aligned with what I like in a design um, I knew straight away I was going to like this and my philosophy on survival and survival knives it's not necessarily determined by the absolute size of the knife but now we're hitting some hard stuff here which is a good test for this knife um, it's not the size of the knife that determines whether it's good for survival. Well, within reason. I, I like something just touching on, on a minimum of about three and three quarter inches so that it can handle up to wrist thick size material. But it's really the build structure of the knife. Now, I'm hitting stuff that I would ordinarily avoid, but I like to use a knife beyond the requirements that you would have should you find yourself in a survival situation. So as I was saying, it's the build integrity that I like on a knife. So I like a knife to be close to uh, unbreakable in, in its construction. Um, so as I said, this is AEBL and it's a grind that I don't normally use either. It's a convex grind, um, which is fantastic really. Um, most of my Scandi knives, I, I put a tiny micro secondary on them because I don't think Zero ground scandies are, are that resilient for hard use to be honest. Now we made a few feathers with this 
and this is a little bit of jute twine fluffed up which is my favorite method of getting the initial ignition so we might as well kill two birds with one stone here it has been said to me uh, about a week ago that this wazoo necklace the survival the bushcraft necklace is a bit of a gimmick now this is how i wear mine i have a sunto clipper uh, compass on it all the time and i was just going to show you that really is far from being a gimmick okay so just you can fold that up like that and get a kind of a grip on it There we go. Not really that gimmicky, is it? I wear this all the time. Like I mean, when I say all the time, this is on my neck when I'm asleep at night. Great bit of kit. So it it does everything, and I'm I kind of use this really really hard. I'll tell you what I've done with it in the last eighteen hours. Uh, this knife. Um, it's done a squirrel, it's processed a squirrel, it has carved um, a friction fire board and a spindle and has performed friction fire within 20 minutes of it arriving. It has, what else is, it's been fishing and has processed some uh, meat for, for uh, my birds of prey. So it's been working over the last 18 hours. And I, I definitely know it never struck a ferro rod until I used it yesterday. I haven't even got the chance to put a lanyard on it yet, which I will today. And <clears throat> just on the, on the discussion of lanyards, I think they're vitally important in a knife for a couple of reasons. One, I, I do quite a bit of fishing, so if I'm over water, I like to have my hand through a lanyard in the event that it drops out of my hand, my knife isn't gone. Uh, the other reason I like to put a brightly unnatural coloured lanyard through this so if I drop it on the forest floor or in the midst of grass it's, it's very when you have an unnatural colour whether it's orange or whatever it's very easy to find so I'm just gonna show you those two knives together and you can see they are quite comparative um, I can't tell you any more about that because usually, um, before I do a review on a knife, I have have been using it for at least three months. But you know, my best friend Gary, he put me onto this knife, the LT Roy Genesis, and you know what? I I handled that knife um, in his house, and I knew straight away I had to order one. In fact, I'd ordered one within an hour after that, and. It never, it never really, I don't know why I never got it, I just thought it was just another bushcraft knife, but, but it's far from it. And um, this is my own knife to Talon, and like I mean, I have been using this day in, day out, and I still haven't done a review on it, but I would, there is a review coming on that this week. And that's a marvellous knife too. And then this one that arrived yesterday, and I just... I'm getting along really, really well with this, and I will definitely be keeping my eyes uh, out peeled for a 3V version of this. Now, on a final note, <clears throat> the size of these knives, if you have them paired with a backhoe or something like that, the amount of work that you can do with them on a small saw, <clears throat> the beauty of saws, they're so light, but you can do a hell of a lot of work with a four inch bladed knife when it's paired up with a backhoe or you know that type of thing so so guys thanks for dropping by and uh there's probably going to be a few still photos put in with this as well seeing other stuff that i've done with that knife in the last 18 years or so and um, we'll be back as you know we're all stuck at home at the moment with this pandemic or you know so we'll be going to do another few videos during the week see you soon guys <laughs>